So let's continue talking about quadratic equations. Today we're going to look at how we can model uh, with quadratic equations, how we can come up with or use the equation and help find important information like the maximum, the minimum, the intercepts, um, and other information that can be gathered from that and how we use that kind of more in the real world. So first thing we want to take a look at is you know, kind of the basics of uh, first of all, quadratic equation in standard form. Uh, you know, quadratics are degree two equations. We've got an x squared. We talked about how to solve it by factoring um, or graphing. Uh, keep in mind that when we're solving it, when we find the value, like we solve it by factoring, get x equals 1 or 5, those represent the x-intercepts or the roots. We also call them the zeros of the equation. Um, but we're all referring to the same thing when we're talking about that. So just as long as we have our terminology down, I might refer to it as the solution, the roots, the x-intercepts, the zeros. That all means the same thing. Uh, so it's important to understand that as we go forward. So the other thing it's important to know is that there could be three possible solution types. There could be two solutions if we cross the x-intercept twice. If it's on the x-intercept, there's if the vertex is on there, we have one solution. If it's above and opening up or below and opening down, we don't have any solutions, any real solutions. We'll talk about imaginary solutions when you get uh, into higher level math, maybe Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus. Um, but keep that in mind uh, with the number of solutions. So let's take a look at a vertical motion model. So if you throw something up in the air, uh, you know a couple things are going to happen. Um, you know that well, gravity is going to pull that thing down, and however fast you throw it, the object in the, into the air will have an effect, and wherever that object starts will have an effect. So as we take a look at projectiles, those are objects propelled into the air, but can't keep themselves in the air, such as a thrown ball. Um, we use this vertical motion model. So uh, the height in feet uh, is h. And we have three parts to this. The first part is gravity. Gravity pulls down on it. That's why that's negative. Um, and the initial velocity of the object thrown up uh, pushes it up plus the height. So three bits of information. So T stands for time, in this case in seconds. Uh, and then uh, V is our initial vertical velocity. So how fast that object is getting thrown up into the air. And then S is going to be our um, initial height. So this equation models a projectile launched uh, when we're measuring in feet. If we're measuring in meters, it would be a little bit different. Uh, but let's take an example of the shot put athlete. Uh, they throw the shot put in the air with an initial vertical velocity of 40 feet per second. And we want to come up with an equation that's going to model this. What is the height of the shot put over time? So let's come up with an equation for that. So part A says write an equation that models the height in feet as a function of time. So height is equal to, well, gravity is going to be negative 16 uh, t squared. And our initial vertical velocity is 40, so we'll put that in for v plus 40t, and plus our initial height. The initial height that we're throwing it is 6.5 feet off the ground. So this is going to give us our equation. This models the height of the uh, shot put over time. Uh, let's find out how long that shot put is in the air. So if we want to do that, uh, we need to find out, well, when height is equal to 0. So for part B, we want to find out when that is equal to zero again. So we'd set this equal to zero. And keep in mind, there would be multiple ways to solve this. And let's figure out uh, some of those methods. Well, we could complete the square. We could factor it. Uh, we could use quadratic formula. Or we could graph it. I'm going to show you how to graph it in this case. Uh, feel free to try one of the other methods and check your solution. Uh, so I'm going to go on to Desmos. And I'm just going to enter my equation into my graphing calculator. 
So y equals negative 16t squared plus 40t plus um, 6.5, I believe was our equation. Okay, and then once I have that equation, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at uh, what I have. And as we model this equation, this is our initial, um, the initial height, our y-intercept. Shot put goes up in the air, reach the maximum of 31 feet at one and a quarter seconds. And it reaches the ground at 2.653 seconds when its height is zero. So using my graph, uh, I can model that equation and figure out that um, the shot put is in the air for 2.6 seconds or 2.653 to be more exact so uh, we could enter that value in and say well our h our height is 2.653 seconds as long as we interpret our graph correctly you would get the same thing if you use the quadratic formula now keep in mind if you use the quadratic formula you would get two solutions because there are two x-intercepts, you'd get a negative value um, because it crosses at two spots. But we're not interested in that one because that would be if we went back in time, which we can't. We're starting here, throws a shot put up, and it lands back at 2.653. Okay, well, let's take a look at our next example. We've got a bridge, a suspension cables between two towers of the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan. Those form a parabola, you model by the graph, y equals 0 0.000097x squared minus 0.37x plus 549. So if we take that parabola, throw it on a graph, that's the equation that we get. Uh, x and y are measured in feet. We want to find the height of the cable above the water at its lowest point. So we want to find how high the cable is at its lowest point. Well, the lowest point is going to be its vertex. So can we find the vertex? In this equation well vertex we know is going to be negative b over 2a in standard form since this is a standard form equation uh, let's find negative b over 2a so in this case uh, that'll give us our axis of symmetry then we can plug it in and find the actual vertex point so uh, negative b would be positive 0.37 over 2 times a, well, a is 0 0.00097. And if we simplify that, uh, x is going to give us, let's see, negative 1907. Not sure if I did that right. I calculated the negative. It should have been positive, right? Positive divided by positive is positive, Mr. Hochmuth. So if I do that right, try that again. I get yeah, positive 1907.2 uh, roughly. So if I get that as my axis of symmetry. And I can plug that in to my equation uh, to find my uh, vertex point. Okay, so once I find my axis of symmetry, I plug my x value into my equation, and I can get my y value. So when I do that, I've typed it into my calculator, and I get 196.2. So that should give me y value of 196.2, which would re represent how many feet above the ground or above the water that is since we've lined up our graph so that our x-axis is the water uh, the other way we can do that is if we looked at our graphing calculator if we enter the equation on here and after we enter our equation we're trying to find our vertex so my graphing calculator I can just click to find my vertex uh, Desmos it does that very nicely and it gives us a vertex point the x and y's so the y would represent how far above the water. So if we can interpret using our graph, uh, we can do that. 
So either way works. All right. So let's take a look at another problem. All of you take a look at that and try this one on your own. Chris stands on the edge of the building at a height of 60 feet, throws the ball upward with an initial velocity of 68 feet per second. The ball eventually falls all the way to the ground. What's the maximum height reached by the ball? How many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height? How long will it take the ball to reach the ground? So remember we start with our, this is a projectile. The ball is going up in the air, but it's not going to stay up in the air too long. Negative 16 T squared plus VT plus S. Okay, so come up with your equation and then answer the questions up there. Restart the video when you're ready to see an explanation. Okay, so if you're ready to take a look at how we can find the answers to these questions, right now we've got our equation, h equals negative 16t squared plus 68t, since our vertical velocity is 68, plus 60, since 60 is our initial height. So the way I solve this, you could have solved it many different ways, but uh, to find the maximum height um, and how many seconds it takes to reach that, you can find the vertex. And then how long it takes to reach ground, we're looking to find one of the x-intercepts, one of the zeros. So I graph this. So if we take a look on Desmos, uh, if we graph it, uh, so I enter my equation, h equals negative 16t squared plus 68t plus 60. Notice this graph doesn't look very good, so i got to change my window, change my x-axis to something that will work. So I'll just go negative 5 to, um, which time I think this will be in the air, maybe 15 seconds. And height, well, I know it started at 60 feet, so it's not going to go too much higher. So let's go 0 to 200. Once i got a workable window, I can zoom out and take a look at what I need to find. I need to find my max height. It's going to be right here, my vertex. Uh, so my max height, I can see, is going to be uh, 132.25. And that's measured in feet because that's my vertex. How long does it take to get to max height? Well, two and a quarter sec or 2.125 seconds. And then finally, let's interpret how long is it going to take to reach the ground. Well, it goes up, comes back down right here. And let's find out what the intercept is. It's five. So I know that's going to be five seconds. So once we graph this, we can quickly and easily find some of that important information um, and move on from there. Okay, so now that we've used a quadratic equation and helped figure out how to model and find maximum points, minimum points, zeros, let's take a look at how we can do a regression using a quadratic equation. We've done that with linear and exponential. So let's take a look at this scenario, fuel economy. So we're driving, we know that aggressive driving wastes gas. Uh, it says you can lower your gas mileage by 33% at highway speeds. Uh, we know sensible driving is safer, and it saves gas money. Important news announcement for all you teen drivers out there. So an idling vehicle gets zero miles per gallon. Slower city driving results in poor fuel efficiency. Gas mileage decreases rapidly at speeds above 60 miles per hour, so don't go speeding. Uh, here's some data collected by an engineer for a mid-sized family car. The speed the car travels and the miles per gallon the car gets. And maybe your car has one of those where you see miles per gallon listed at the certain speeds. So let's make a scatter plot of this, and then we'll use that to create an equation of best fit and help answer those questions. So I'll show you how to do that on my graphing calculator, um, and you can do that on Desmos too, uh, but I'll show you on the TI since that's the one you can use on a ACT test, and that's important to know how to use that one. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our data from our table. So speed we'll use as our X value, and the miles per gallon uh, will be our y value. So we'll just enter that into our table. So we go to stat, and we go edit. We need to edit our information. So the x will be our first column, 35, 40. Uh oh, my calculator is playing tricks on me. There we go. Fixed it. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. And then in our second table, I'll go over, we had 18, 20, 24, 27, 30, 30, 29, 25, 23, 
and 19. Looks like I entered my x values wrong. What were those again? 30 up to 75. So that's easy. I can just go back and fix that. I want to make sure that they correspond though. So it's important that I get it the right order. All right. So now once I have those, I can make a scatter plot. So I want to make sure my scatter plot's on. So I go second stat plot. And I need to turn this on. And so I hit enter and I turn it on. My scatter plot, my X list is L1, L2, the two ones I entered in. Uh, so next I'll go to uh, zoom. Go down to zoom stat which will show my scatter plot. Enter. And there we go. Uh, so from there, hopefully you can tell, but that looks kind of like a quadratic equation. Now, doesn't it? If I were to draw my curve, it looks kind of like a parabola. So we need to create our equation for that, our quadratic of best fit. And we're going to do that by going back to stat. And We'll do our calculate. So over to calculate and go down to quadratic regression. Hit enter. Uh, those are the right values that we want. Line one, line two for X and Y. And calculate our equation. And it gives us our A value, B value, and C value. So I could just substitute those in to get my equation. So once I have my equation, uh, the way I can use it now, I go back to my y equals. And now to enter my equation, I go to variables. Uh, I go down to statistics. And over to equation. And I'm going to use my regression equation. It's stored for me automatically in this calculator. Enters it there. Go back to my graph. And it draws my nice parabola for me. So now we can work with our parabola and answer our questions. So as we go back to the questions we want to answer with this, uh, we've gotten our equation. We found that from our quadratic re regression on the calculator. Substitute our A, B, and C values. Uh, we want to determine the speed that maximizes miles per gallon. So that's going to be at the vertex. So in our TI calculator, we can calculate that by going second to calculate. Uh, and we go to the maximum, and left bound means get to the left side of the maximum. Right bound means get on the right side of it. So I move my cursor over, and guess it's somewhere in between there. And then it calculates at 53.6 and 29.2 as our x and y values. We want the miles, the speed that maximizes that. So the speed is our x values. So our speed is going to be 53.6 miles, uh, miles per hour. So 53.6 miles per hour is the most efficient uh, speed for this particular car. Now it says use our graph for equation to find miles per gallon if we travel an average of 68 miles per hour. So in that case, we need to go back to our calculator and we will either uh, substitute into our equation, 68 for x, since that's our uh, speed, or we can go on our calculator and trace and go 68, make sure I'm on my equation, 68 miles per hour, and trace on there and find out 68 is about 24.5. Uh, miles per gallon. The other option would be to use our table feature. Um, what do we say? 24.5 miles per gallon. Uh, the other way is go on to our table, so second table, and we go down on our table until x is 68. I think I can type that in there. But I just have to keep going down until I find that value. Or, if we go back to our graph, we can do second calculate a value when x equals 68. 
and according to our equation, it'll give us that value right away. So multiple ways to do that with our calculator. It says this function model could lead to some unreasonable conclusions. Identify and discuss at least one such example. Well, as we zoom out on our graph, uh, you might be tempted to think that, you know, as we look further out, uh, that there's a point where, you know, we get negative gas mileage or we get zero gas mileage. Well, that's, we know that's not true. Um, you know, if we have these intercepts, uh, we know that it's not possible that if we're driving um, at a certain mileage that we're going to lose gas and get negative gas mileage. Um, but this model just predicts based off the given information. It's a good model for the data that we have. Uh, once we go a little bit further beyond that, sometimes those predictions don't work out perfectly. So keep that in mind with any regression equation. So uh, today we learned how to model with quadratic equations and do a regression with that um, and use our calculator to help us solve those. So uh, you got some work to do on your practice. If you have questions, I can help you with that in class.